What's going on, guys? And welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where every single week I, Graham, Gius, and Matthews break down all the original programming that I watch on the WWE Network. Today we're talking the latest installment in the WWE 24 series entitled Empowered that is essentially kind of sort of like a part two to the Women's Evolution 24 special they did about a year and a half ago. I never talked about it for WWE Network and Show. Maybe at some point I'll go back and watch it. Uh, but it was very good. That kind of focused around the introduction of the... Uh, kind of the end of an era with the Divas division, the death of the Divas championship and the introduction of the women's title, the reintroduction of a women's championship in WWE. This one, rather, focused on the Women's Royal Rumble, the inaugural installment in the Women's Rumble back in January. I was there to witness the match. I was there for Rumble weekend in Philly, and a great weekend it was. So if anything, this special brought back a lot of memories. But it was awesome to see the reactions of all the women getting to be a part of this, and how far they've come since the last women's special, uh, the women's evolution special about a year and a half ago. So they kick off the special with a brief recap of the women's evolution, um, you know, how far they've come between the, uh, you know, the first ever women's Hell in the Cell match and all this other stuff leading to the women's Royal Rumble a few months ago. Uh, the women meet up the night before to kind of talk about the match, rehearse the match, uh, obviously all the, you know, the little bits and pieces about what's going to go on during the entire contest and uh, stuff like that. So they see a lot of familiar faces and Natalia sees a lot of people she used to work with, people that she's never worked with before. Trish Stratus, you see Lita, Jacqueline, Kelly Kelly, Beth Phoenix, list goes on and on and on, Molly Holly. And they're all like super, like everyone, like Tori Wilson is super happy to see people that she used to work with, she used to work with from Trish Stratus to Molly Holly, whereas as someone like a, uh, you know, like a Ruby Riot or a Liv Morgan or a Sarah Logan is like, holy shit, all these former faces are coming back for this one match. It's pretty surreal. Uh, Natalia says, none of us ever expected to be a part of this. And that's, that's a shoot statement. I don't think any woman in WWE history ever expected to be a part of a women's Royal Rumble. Um, I know it, it might have been a possibility a few months before it actually happened, but you go back years and years and years, man, back to the days of the Divas. When they were getting fucking two minutes on Raw, maybe a minute on SmackDown, and they were hardly a focus on the show. A women's Royal Rumble back then was not even conceivable, not even the, the closest thing to conceivable, the farthest thing from conceivable. And it finally happened, and it was really cool that all these women got to be a part of it. Um, so at said meeting where the women meet up the night before the event, they were informed by Mark Carano at that meeting that they would be going on last in the main event. There were some rumblings the day of the show. Um, that's probably how it leaked out, but no one really believed it. It really wasn't until the graphics showed from the men's rumble halfway during the show that the women would be closing. I honestly thought the women would be opening the show and the men's would close the show, but I'm glad they did close the show, considering how history of a making history making of a match it was, and the cool moments, it was the first ever one. I personally enjoyed the men's rumble more, that's purely my opinion. Uh, but the Women's Rumble was also great, too, and I'll talk more about that as we go along. Um, but anyway, they were super psyched. Everyone goes nuts to be main eventing. The Royal Rumble pay-per-view, the first ever Big Four event headlined by women. Uh, a sol not like a mixed tag team match or any shit like that. Like a real women's match in the main event of a pay-per-view. The second ever next to Charlotte and Sasha at Hell in the Cell 2016, which I was also in attendance for. So I've been now in attendance for the only women's main events in, in uh, WWE history, which is really cool. So anyway, um, they were we, we were showing a recap of the women's, speaking of which, the women's Hell in the Cell match from a year and a half ago in Boston between Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks. Not the best match in retrospect, um, but it was history-making. Nonetheless, meant a lot to Charlotte and Sasha to be in that spot, main event in the show. Not to say they didn't deserve to main event the show. They absolutely did. It was a much bigger match than either Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins or Rusev versus Roman Reigns that night. But as a match, it was not nearly as strong as their Iron Woman match or the False Count Anywhere match or even the other matches they had on Raw. Um, anyway, so we get a quick recap also of the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match from the summer of 2017, which was won by Carmella. Uh, Banks and Bliss, they talk about having the first ever women's match, for WWE anyway, in Abu Dhabi a few months ago, which we kind of got some focus on, we already knew all about this, they talked about it only a month or two ago, um, but Corey Graves sat down with both of them on his shooting, what is it, Straight to the Source show, Straight to the Source, Straight to the Source, excuse me, um, that show on the WWE Network a few months ago, so we already kind of knew all about that. 
Uh, Triple H did call it culturally significant, though. Obviously, they had their skin covered because the women there could only show so much skin. So, Sasha and Bliss had special gear made to cover up their skin. But um, they had a This Is Hope chant, which obviously broke Banks down. And she started crying. Typical Sasha. But it was pretty cool. It's pretty cool nonetheless. Uh, so, going back to the Women's Royal Rumble. The women were rehearsing the match the night before. Which is where I believe Alicia Fox got hurt. Because you see Alicia Fox here. You see her a part of the meeting and a part of the rehearsal. She wasn't a part of the match itself, and the report came out that... Um, I didn't see Tamina there either, but I'm pretty sure she was in the match. I had heard that she got hurt too, but she was a part of the match. I did not see her at all on this, on this special. Anyway, so I think that's where Alicia Fox got hurt, and then she was then replaced by Kyrie Sane. Um, we see Kyrie Sane's reaction. She starts crying. She's breaking down in front of... I've forgotten who in front of uh, maybe Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan or something like that. But she starts crying, finding out that she'd be a part of the match. And she wasn't originally supposed to be part of the match. It was supposed to be Alicia Fox, which would explain why Dana Brooke tossed her out. They probably already had the format set for the match. They weren't going to deviate from it, which is why they had Kyrie Singh get tossed up by Dana Brooke. Um, as opposed to something more memorable. It was probably meant for Alicia Fox, but just wanted to note that. So anyway, Sonya Deville says that we would not be here right now if it wasn't for those who paved the way for us. And they show highlights of... Many, many women, Sensational Sherry and all these others. They did not show the fabulous moolah. Thank fucking God. This was obviously completed before the whole controversy from, you know, about a week ago when they scrubbed her name off the Battle Royal, and thank God they did. But honest to God, they definitely, absolutely, 100% actually had her involved in this thing in terms of the, uh, the special and showing highlights of her and calling her, you know, fucking pioneer and all this other shit, which she wasn't. She set back women's wrestling so much more than she furthered it, but nonetheless, they definitely took her out after that whole controversy came out, so thank God they did. But anyway, we see highlights of, you know, the, the current Hall of Famers, Lita, Trish, Beth Phoenix, but we also see highlights of Wendy Richter, who was in the Hall of Fame, but we also see highlights of China, Sable, Cindy Lauper. It's like all these women, I'm not denying they, they weren't a part of the women's evolution, because they absolutely were. The reason why I'm so surprised is that they would show them and talk about them, but they're not in the, in the fucking Hall of Fame. It's like with Sable, maybe they're waiting until they put in Brock Lesnar a few years down the road and because she's married to Brock Lesnar and they want to put them in together. I would understand that. We have not seen her on WWE TV in like 15 years. So despite the fact that Brock is back in the fold, Sable we have not seen at all. I think she was on screen at the UFC event that he, uh, the UFC fight that he had about a year and a half, two years ago. But other than that, we've not seen Sable on TV in a quite a long time in WWE. Uh, so the fact they would mention her was slightly surprising. They'll mention China every now and again. Um, but still, I think all three of them, especially Cindy Lauper, like China should have been in five years ago. I understand why they wouldn't put her in. Sable, maybe they're waiting. Cindy Lauper, it's like, what the fuck? How could she not have been in 10 years ago? It's like, yeah, fucking Kid Rock and Drew Carey and all these other worthless people in the Hall of Fame. Why not Cindy Lauper? She absolutely had to do with this quote-unquote women's evolution in WWE. Many, 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 many years ago. With Captain Lou Albano. Um, back in the 80s and 90s and, you know, the rock and roll and wrestling connection, all that other shit. Captain Lou Albano. How, how is she not a part of the Hall of Fame already? That's my question. Anyway, we, we get shown highlights of the Mae Young Classic from late last year, which Sarah Logan was... Honored to be a part of, which was won by Kyrie Sane, who I talked about earlier. How she had no idea she'd be a part of this women's rumble until, like, literally the day of. Uh, the women admit to being nervous, but excited for the opportunity to meet them at the pay-per-view and compete in the first ever women's rumble. Charlotte and Stephanie, they put over Asuka as such a huge deal. And how she's such a valuable asset, how special she is. She has that aura about her that makes her a star. Triple H talks about how she was aware, he was aware of her work in Japan. And he knew that if he was able to snag her to NXT, get her to NXT, it would be a pretty big fucking deal. And he also mentioned that the main roster essentially raided the NXT women's division more than once. You first had the instance in 2015 when Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky were all called up at once. In the women's division in NXT, was, you were left with a few people, obviously. Uh, Bailey and a few others, Alexa Bliss and Carmella. They weren't ready yet. Bailey was, but nonetheless... Um, what I was getting at here, uh, with the main roster, yeah, they had raided the NXT Women's Division, not only in 2015, but also in 2016 as well, when they took Nia Jax, they took Bayley the night after SummerSlam, but they took Nia Jax, Carmella, Alexa Bliss, and Triple H specifically said, 
let me keep Asuka. She needs to be the foundation of this women's division in NXT, and it would not be until the year after, in 2017, that she would get called up to Monday Night Raw. So anyway, we get a look at the NXT women call-ups in recent years, from the Riot Squad to Nia Jax to Carmella to Alexa Bliss and the success they've all had on the main roster. We also get a good look at Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. They talk about their friendship from the start on Tough Enough, how they kind of hit it off right from the get-go. And Sonya Deville was like, okay, when I heard that I was getting called up, not only with my best friend Mandy, but also would be paired with Paige, it's going to be pretty cool. And as absolution, then after Survivor Series, and Deville talks about how Paige paved the way for the women, which is absolutely 100% true, um, you know, from her work in 2013, 2014, 2015 in WWE and NXT. And Paige was their judge on Tough Enough, and she said that she's happy to help these women, you know, get to that next level on the main roster. Deville and Rose can't believe it. It's more so Sonya than, than Mandy. I'm sure Sonya means a lot more to her than it does for Mandy, but at least Deville's more, you know, more expressive about it. But she does admit here that the first ever pay-per-view their first ever pay-per-view, because they had only debuted at their Survivor Series. So by this point, they had not been on a major WWE show. Their first ever event, the Women's Royal Rumble in the main event. That's a pretty big deal. They let it soak in. They're like, wow, this is pretty amazing. Uh, meanwhile, Charlotte calls Stephanie McMahon a leader, and Natalia says that she is the driving force behind the women's evolution. Whatever. I mean, I, I know that's like partially true. They give Stephanie a little bit too much credit, but... Nonetheless, uh, Mickey James calls it a homecoming, not only with the women that she's been a part of, you know, with the company now for a while, from Alicia Fox and Natalia, but also to see the other women that she worked with even before that time, from Trish Stratus to Lita and a few others. Speaking of Lita, she admits that when the Women's Royal Rumble was announced, she had no idea if they'd be bringing people back or even if she'd be a part of it. And obviously she was, and she was honored to be a part of the Women's Rumble. Um, Ember Moon talks about marking out for all the former faces. She's getting her makeup done. She sees Michelle McCool, Beth Phoenix, Molly Holly, and she's just going nuts. She could not be any happier to have been there and part of this history-making matchup. Uh, the women prepare for the Women's Rumble. We get highlights shown of the Men's Rumble, as well as the uh, three-way Universal Championship match between Brock Lesnar, Kane, and um, Braun Strowman from that same night. We see Paige crying backstage while Triple H is making, you know, you know, he's doing his little speech about all the women being part of the match. Paige is crying that she can't be a part of it because she obviously got hurt, I think, a month before the show. They could not clear to compete. She still has not been clear to compete. She did not outright say here that she is not injured, but, I mean, she obviously said that. But she didn't outright say here that she's retired from the ring. Um, but that's been the rumor for a while now. It's been about two months since that rumor came out, that report came out. And WWE is not, you know, they have not uh, said that it was false. Paige herself has not denied the rumors. So I would, I think that I would believe that they're true. But uh, nonetheless, it was kind of unfortunate she could not be a part of it. Um, but it was still, you know, a cool moment to see her there. Because she, like I had said before, kind of paved the way for the women. Especially in NXT before she got called up. Like I had said, Triple H talked to the girls before the bout, saying this is going to be one of the greatest things you will ever do in your life, one of the greatest things you will ever do in your career. Cherish this moment. Um, so Alexa Bliss says that everyone was in the zone. She was obviously not a part of the match, but she did sit ringside with Charlotte Flair as the Raw Women's Champion, kind of, you know, scouting the competition and who she might be facing at WrestleMania. So she says everyone was in the zone, everyone was pumped and ready for this match. Charlotte, meanwhile, says that she was very proud of Sasha when her music hit. She was very proud of Sasha to be in that spot. Becky Lynch, who came out at number two, even happier for her. Uh, there was a shot of uh, Charlotte, you know, fist pumping, like, holy shit, yeah, Becky, number two, which is really cool. Um, Lita gets a giant pop when she came out. She When she comes out, she gets an absolutely monstrous reaction, which I can attest to. Like I said, I was there. One of the biggest reactions out of all the women in the entire match. It was so fucking cool. Um, to hear that dun 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 that classic music and have her come out and kick ass, awesome. Naomi says that she had a bigger adrenaline rush than she has ever had before when she had jumped over to the barricade and she was doing the kind of the Kofi Kingston spot of the Rumble where um she had took the chair from Maria Menounos. She said, "Hey, she's sweet, but if she won't get up, I'll beat her up because I got to take that chair and get back in the Rumble match," which she did. And it was not a blown spot. It went off without a hitch. And it was really cool to see. 
Uh, the girls, apparently, they admitted they did not know much about Ronda Rousey, if anything at all, which does not surprise me. I didn't think they would tell the girls that Ronda Rousey's coming in. She wasn't a part of the match, so why bother telling him? You know, she came in afterward. Alexa Bliss also hinted that she did not know Ronda was coming out. I don't, I don't know if that's kayfabe or if she legit did not know. It honestly would not surprise me if she didn't know. I think maybe the only person, obviously, who might have known would be Asuka because she did not shake the hands of Alexa or Charlotte. Um, but yeah, still, I think that's uh, that could be absolutely accurate where they did not know that Ronda was coming out. She didn't do anything anyway. She, you know, obviously she just pointed the WrestleMania sign, shook the hand of Stephanie and, and attempted to shake the hand of Asuka and that was it. Um, anyway, so the girls might may or may not have known about Rousey. Probably not. Trish comes out at number 30, gets a giant reaction. Asuka wins the whole thing. Another big reaction. And then Rousey shows up. The place goes nuts. We get a lot of great crowd reactions. Unfortunately, I was not a part of them. I was up top with RJ, but great show nonetheless. Um, so Rousey shows up, gets a big reaction, faces off, like I said, with Charlotte, with Alexa Bliss, with Asuka, with Stephanie, does the dreaded point to the WrestleMania sign. Um, but it was a cool moment nonetheless. Charlotte says that Ronda Rousey, she's an attraction in sports entertainment and is where everyone wants to be. Um, and Ronda has said for a long time now that she's a big wrestling fan. She's always wanted to be a part of the WWE. It was only really a matter of when and not if she would make the jump. And I think, honestly, the timing could not have been better. Um, Ronda also talks about Roddy Piper's son. Obviously, Roddy Piper, a huge influence for Rowdy Ronda Rousey in terms of uh, her career in the UFC and now in WWE and being really close with him. Uh, so he had passed away in 2015, but his son flies out to the show to give her his jacket, which is what she wore down to the ring that night. She gets real emotional. I almost cried watching this because I miss Rowdy. I miss Piper a lot, so this was really, really cool to see. Um, anyway, Naomi says there was a big bonding session afterwards, something that may never happen again, but in the moment, it was awesome. And then we get highlights of the Women's Rumble playing to Kick in the Door, a song by uh, Azena Pack. PAX or something like that. It's X-E-N-I-A and then P-A-X if you're interested in the song. Um, so we get highlights of that and they're asking, what's next? We got a women's elimination chamber match which happened the following month. And then Alexa Bliss ends the special by saying, or before we, we get in that, the actual special closes with a shot of all the women before the women's rumble which was posted on Twitter. So you've seen it before but it's a great picture. Um, Alexa Bliss says at the very end there, that she believes the next step in this women's evolution is main eventing WrestleMania, which is correct. I could not agree more. I would hope not this year. I was thinking about this while watching this, that I would hope they don't put the mixed tag team match in the main event of WrestleMania 34. I think Asuka and Charlotte is a bigger main event match than the mixed tag team match. I love Ronda, love Kurt. The match should be good with them versus the authority. It should not be the main event, though. That should. I think they should wait and hold off until next year to do Asuka and Ronda Rousey in the main event of WrestleMania. That is WrestleMania main event worthy, in my opinion, but merely my two cents. So anyway, guys, that is my review of WWE 24 Empowered that aired last week after Raw on the WWE Network, March 19th, 2018. Be sure to check it out. Great special. Thoroughly enjoyed it. All these 24 specials, as I've said a million times over, they're all excellent. I have not seen a bad one yet, and this is no exception. So uh, this was great. Be sure to check it out on the WWE Network. And I uh, really enjoyed watching it. So, anyway, guys, I will be back next week with whatever's airing on Raw tonight. I will review on WWE Network and Chill, or after Raw tonight, excuse me. I will review right here on WWE Network and Chill next week. So, in the meantime, and in between time, guys, be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel, above all else, for more daily content. Find me on the socials, on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff in the description box down below. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.